This is my wicked story. First, yeah, grab your drinks. You have a lot more. <laughs> so, the wicked was coming from Broadway to London, and I was on a tour of Tonight's the Night, playing Sweet Lady Mary. And they called you in, and I was on tour, so it was very hard getting back to London. And I had three editions. My, la my third edition was my one before the final. Um, what the American assistant director, Lisa, came over to kind of vet and see who they wanted to put forward at the very end. And I was in Plymouth at the time, and we all know Plymouth is a four and a half hour train journey from London. So I slog, get up at four o'clock in the morning, get up, get my t in there, and I, and I had a window, my audition was at like two, I was too green, excuse the prop pump, <laughs> too green to ask for an earlier audition. Uh, because I didn't want to offend anybody. So and I knew the window, if I missed that train back to Plymouth to do the show that night, I was in trouble. And what happened? I missed the train. Uh. So I got a verbal warning saying, and if you go back to the final, you're gonna lose your job. So I had to let it go first time. I had to let it go. And I remember crying and speaking to the cast agent, Pip Alien. She was like, Rachel, it's gonna happen for you. Don't worry. You're a DTL, which is down the line. Same, there's news. So down the liner, that's fine. So I did my job and I, and then did it come up? Well, yes, so the second time it happened, I was um, auditioning for I Do Anything, the Andrew Lloyd Webber, Cameron McIntosh uh, programme, looking for a Nancy in Oliver. And I had to decide between the final of going up to Andrew Lloyd Webber's estate in Sidmonton to find out if I got on the live shows, which is what we all wanted, or go to my final for Wicked in London. And I knew instantly that it was Andrew's house. Because for me at this point in my career, in my heart of hearts, I knew I could play Alphabet. Um, I, when I say I knew I was going to, I, that's, that's not fact, nobody knows that. I just knew I could do this, I could do this role if I'm given the opportunity again. So I thought, I'm gonna let it go. I'm gonna let it go again. Just relax, come on, it's a long a long career. We want a long career. So I wanted the exposure on, on the, the TV shows because I felt like every edition I wasn't getting, someone from a TV show was getting it. <coughs> so uh, producers needed a name recognized to get bums and seats in the theaters and I thought, well, if this gives me some exposure, it wasn't the X Factor, I didn't want to be a pop star. I wanted to do this line of work, but have a bit more exposure for, for uh, producers and directors. And, and I, I think that's, I think it played off, it paid off. And so they pulled me out of the final um, of Wicked and they were very sad. I remember Pepe said they were, they, were, they were very sad to lose you, but. So, and then it was third time lucky for me. So I was doing We Will Rock You, my first West End debut. And they asked if I want to re-sign for another year and I said no and they couldn't believe they were like why why are you put yourself out of work if you got something coming up and I said no just in case Alexa Kadeem leaves and I want to be available to play Alphabet and they're like you're leaving just in case you know, <laughs> oh, someone is going to leave playing the role of Alphabet absolutely yes because if I'm now and we were rock you and she leaves I'm going to be devastated this is how much how badly I wanted to play Alphabet that's that, there was, there was, at that for about four or five years, that's all I could think of. It was the only role I wanted. One thing I've always wanted to ask you yes. about, which fascinates me, is um, the fact just before, I believe, you started Wicked, you did a show called Just End. Oh my God, yes! Which is, for anyone that doesn't know, it's like a musical theatre satire where they rewrite musical theatre songs into kind of, um, it's like, a news thing. Yeah, or, or the ticking. And so you like, did it, and you play several characters yes. in it, um, but you did it with Louise Dearman, yes. and you did a takeoff of, of Wicked. Wicked. At that point, did you did both you know? know? No! <laughs> it, was it was a year before. Oh, it was a year before. Well over a year before. Okay. So I was doing Rock You, and Gary Lake, who wrote it, he's brilliant, he knows Louise years, and he was like, I would love to get used two together to do my So Just End, it's called. And um, he hasn't done one in years, but he sure, they're, they're very funny. And so our take, he did a, a take on Wicked, Change the Words of Defying Gravity. And Louise being a, a, a soprano <coughs> and, and me being an alto, he says, listen, I'm gonna, the, the, the fun in this is, is that I'm switching them. Is that we get we let Glinda sing Defying Gravity and that's the joke and, and and I'm saying you know you can't do it or you can't do it or whatever it was so we we take the piss out of it and this is like we hadn't even auditioned for it I mean I had we had auditioned for it like but we weren't for that year that we both got it and yeah and then 
we both get it the following year. So so isn't it such a small world? And the producers were like, yeah, yeah, we'll just forget you guys did that. Just, <laughs> just don't bring that up. <laughs> well, I'm bringing up all the Michael things we should be I know. That. That's no, no, no. Um, it's there, it's out there. Now, Wicked, everyone wants to know this, and I've asked you this every time we've done an interview, right. but everyone always wants to know about um, things that have gone wrong on stage yes. in Wicked. It's a real, everyone loves those moments yes. of, I mean, I've seen Glinda throw a wand into the audience. <laughs> yes. uh, I was there. Uh, yeah, 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 Susie. Was? Yeah, Susie. it was a matinee. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, but what, apart from that, I've said that, you can't have that one. Um, what are some of the memorable ones? I thought it was part of the show. I know it does work, doesn't it? Yeah. So, I mean, well, there's the no flies. Uh, that when, 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 well, Africa doesn't fly, the, the cherry picker doesn't work. I shouldn't call it a cherry picker. But um, <laughs> when the le- levitator doesn't work. Um, <laughs> um, and that happened to me maybe four or five times. And um, I, and funny, I, I listened to Shoshana Bing talking about this, and it only ever happened to Shoshana once. And it happened to me four or five times. It was quite a regular <laughs> um, in comparison. Um, although I was there for three years. So I would use that opportunity to just sing my face off more than I normally would <laughs> and just and of course the funny thing is is that all the guards you know they're like get her and they're like this and they're like this and for if for no fly they're told they have to do this <laughs> get her <laughs> so they're all on their backs and they're absolutely mortified but they have to go right back to make me look taller <laughs> But yeah, so that that's that's they they're usually the adrenaline goes and and you, you kind of like you feel like you're seeing the show and kind of. So how many times has that happened? Four or five times. Oh. Did you ever have a witch switch? A witch switch? Oh yes, yes. I had an ear infection, and during popular, I thought um, so Louise Dearman was was tipping my p- tipping the bed. I was like, oh, is this? <laughs> stop. I th- actually thought she was. She couldn't tip the bed, so because they stuck to the ground, and uh, and I came off, and we switched uh, after popular. I got a note to them. I, I came off. Who was who? What was it? Nikki. Nikki Davis D. Jones. Nikki, Nikki, Nikki DJ. Yeah, and so she came on. Um, actually, that's when I went off, and she came on. So I give them a, a heads up uh, just before the classroom scene. Uh, I went off, or I usually go off. No, I don't. I went off and went get put Nikki on. So they had about ten minutes to green her and put her on. So that's that's normally what happens, and if 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 you get the chance, sometimes they have to actually stop the show and and start again with a new witch. But yeah, you try and give them a heads up. Um, that's happened. I the, the, I have this holiday thing. When you go on holiday, it's great, mm. two week holiday. But when you come back, your brain just is like, I'm still on holiday. So I am <laughs> I am terrible for trying to remember my lyrics on the first night back from holiday. So, so it's you can laugh, but it's the most terrible. How are you on Monday? Oh my god, terrible, <laughs> terrible. No, but you're you're just living on the edge of your 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 your, your nerves for the whole show, and you have to pretend everything's fine, and your brain's going, what's the next bit? What's the next bit? Um, and this this one time at band camp, um, I came back. And I was doing okay, I was doing okay, and it got to the, the, the trap, the, the lift, Fiero, for no good deed. No good deed, and I was like, Fiero! <sighs> <laughs> well, right, Rachel, calm down, it's, it's only the spell, you can make it up, nobody knows what the spell is. <laughs> Let his trash chop his tongue, as a hand at his hand. Let him bleed him, let him feel no pain. And I came in about 16 bars, <laughs> well into the song, and I did not get away with it. <laughs> I was going to say you started out like a prank. I did not. I, 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 it was almost like the, the So Jazz End. We were like, take a masala, take a, a masala, <laughs> banana. <laughs> Yeah. If anyone hasn't seen the Just End, it is on YouTube. It's, it's fun. Is, uh, pretty, pretty, 